what's going on guys i uh, did not put up a video yesterday um after warriors mavericks game four because didn't really see a point uh the news yesterday out of um uvalde really like really hit me hard and i don't know why i don't have kids or anything yet um i've talked about it with my wife a bit but like anything with kids it's just i I don't want to launch into a whole thing, get all performative or anything like that. Uh, but just didn't didn't feel like the right time to, to break down a basketball game. Uh, but tonight, we got sent back to the mid-90s of NBA basketball with um, the Heat and the Celtics just in an absolute rock fight. Um, the first half in particular was some of the worst basketball I've ever seen. And it wasn't like just play after play getting bailed out with free throws. It was like dudes blowing wide open layups and like just terrible shot selection. And you can say that all of that um, indicates, you know, strong defense from both sides. And yes, defenses were good, but I think that this was more an indication of just how how worn down these teams are. I think this is absolutely a war of attrition for these teams. Um, both sides dealing with injuries. Tonight, you get Mark Smart back. Uh, he plays about 20, 25 minutes. Robert Williams plays 25 minutes or so, still dealing with, dealing with soreness after his meniscus surgery. Um, and on the Heat side, still no Tyler Hero. And not having him has really disrupted the flow of the... Miami Heat, um, and even more than not having Hero, playing Kyle Lowry has kind of uh, ruined the flow of the Heat offense. Like They just cannot get anything going these last two games. In the three games Boston's won, there have been massive leads. All of the games in the series have been one-sided, but that means that's three stinkers that the Heat have put up in five games now with Game six heading back to Boston, and then potentially a game seven in Miami if it comes to it. Um, I don't expect game six to be a blowout just because Miami is that team that always, um, you know, pounds their chest for, for heat culture and, and talks about, you know, doing things the heat way. They have all the, the built in lore about them. So I can't imagine they're just going to roll over. Um, that said, nothing would surprise me. But I think that um, it seems kind of clear that Boston is just outmatching Miami. It kind of feels like this is it. Because both teams played terrible in the first half. Uh, no one could buy a bucket. Uh, the Heat backcourt has been absolutely abysmal over the last two games. I believe the starting backcourt for the Heat is 1 for 28. And that's Kyle Lowry and Max Struess. Uh, just abysmal shooting and good looks, contested looks, and kind of a little bit of everything, but they just all look hurt. Jimmy Butler looks hurt. He was 3 for 14 again tonight. Uh, Kyle Lowry did not hit a shot. He was 0 for 5, but more important than that, he had no assists and three turnovers, and that's not a very Kyle Lowry statistic. You don't trade for him to expect that in the playoffs. Like I don't know if he's still hurt, if he is like falling over the same cliff of washedness that Chris Paul did in the playoffs, but he needs to figure it out quick because they gave up, you know, Precious Achua may not seem like a lot, but he was, you know, one of the better energy guys for Toronto in the second half of the season and through, you know, their playoff appearance. He is one of those dudes that's going to always try. Um, and, you know, if Kyle Lowry's old, if he's over the hill, if he's hurt, then, you know, that's more than you're getting from him. Um, they turned to the bench, and the bench this time, not able to offer much help. Um, Duncan Robinson came in, 4 of 12, 12 points. Uh, get ready to hear his name a lot in trade talks. If you are a Heat fan, if you're a fan of a team that needs, you know, uh, bench scoring or wing scoring and doesn't really care about defense, uh, get ready to listen to a lot of trade packages and ideas about Duncan Robinson because the Heat gave him $90 million. He got played out by another undrafted player in Max Struess. Actually, Gabe Vincent, too. Finally gets his chance to come back into the rotation, and it has been a less than seamless. So 
that hasn't worked. Victor Oladipo was wonderful in the Game um, 4 blowout. Not so wonderful in the Game 5 blowout. He was 1 for 7. He had one of the worst air balls I've seen in a long time on a 3. And, you know, it's a, it's a glaring... Um, it's a, it's glaringly obvious that uh, that they want to let him settle for those outside shots. His game is driving and kicking and getting to the rim. Uh, he's not the outside shooter that Miami wants taking those. So the other uncharacteristic thing with Oladipo was um, the turnovers. He also had like four or five turnovers. Miami's normally a really good team with ball control. 12 turnovers tonight. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you consider just when they came... And, you know, especially in the second half, Boston's able to finally start hitting shots. In particular, Jalen Brown. Um, so hot and cold. Like, is there a player who's had more um, up and ups and downs on how he's perceived than Jalen Brown? Because there was a time when Boston didn't want to trade him for Kawhi. There was a time when Boston was like, how could we not trade him for Kawhi? There was a time where they were like, we should trade Tatum instead of Brown. It's, it's been all over the place. Um, and, you know, 13 points in the fourth quarter to help put it away. Uh, the Celtics went on a huge run in the third quarter. It was like 17 nothing to come back into the game, give themselves a bit of a lead, and then from there they just kind of pulled away. Uh, yeah, so Jalen Brown was 10 of 19 for 25 points. He was uh, 5 for 9 from 3, which is a very uncharacteristically high percentage game for him. Uh, but especially the fourth quarter, like being able to finally hit a rhythm and get, you know, half your points in the fourth quarter in crunch time is, is something that he has done a lot and he's proven very good at doing. Um, so really that was kind of the difference in the game. The Celtics win 93 to 80. Um, I was shocked that he hit 80 points to be totally honest. It was 37 to 42 at halftime. And I was like, this is, this is hell watching this is terrible like what are we doing how did all the how, why do all these people think the 90s basketball is the greatest this is miserable um but it was just kind of that that game everyone looked tired everyone looked like yeah i don't want to be doing this and what i looked at after the game was the three point shots because the three point shots kind of tell the whole story here uh boston was boston was 10 of 33 from three and the Heat, the Heat were 7 of 45 from 3. So almost half their shots as a team. They took 94 shots in the game. Almost half of them were from 3. And they are not a team that has a lot of outside shooting, when, especially when Tyler Hero is not there. That is, you do not want the Heat shooting threes um, when Duncan Robinson's not hitting, when Tyler Hero is not in the lineup. That's probably like the worst case scenario for Heat fans is hearing that the team still attempted 45 threes. And that's partly a testament to Boston's defense really clogging the paint and making it hard for Miami to do the things they want to do. They finished 13 of 14 from the free throw line too. So Boston was really good at limiting um, those chances at the rim. And by removing that, they were able to kind of control the rebounding too, um, which just, you know, sets up everything. It's it's why the Warriors have been so good against uh, Dallas for the first part of that series. Um, one player, too, who will not get tons of credit, has gotten a lot of credit already, but it felt important to mention here, too, is Robert Williams, the Time Lord. Finished with six points, two for two on field goals, but defensively, the man was unstoppable. He finished with three blocks, like three or four shots altered, and when he was the primary defender or the closest defender, Heat players were like two of 13 from the field. So he is absolutely doing his job of making it hard for those Heat players, in particular Bam Adebayo, who I'm disappointed in Bam Adebayo because he had an incredible game three, comes back, goes eight for 15 tonight, 18 points, 10 rebounds, but like it doesn't have an impact on the game. If that makes sense, like sometimes you get those dudes where you're like, man, they really filled the stat sheet, and you could like you could feel it, you could feel them taking over this game, and it just feels like after game three being so good, he just hasn't had he hasn't done that. He's done like like what he needs to, but like it's not he's not dominating the game. It's not like man, he grabbed all those big rebounds. 
man, he hit all those clutch free throws. And it's just crazy. It's crazy because it feels like, you know, he absolutely could do that. And it might be asking a lot on a team of Jimmy Butler because Jimmy Butler is, whether you like it or not, he's the alpha on the team. Um, and, you know, he was 4 of 18 tonight. He took five threes. That's not his game. He only took four free throws, too. So whatever Boston's been doing has been has been really working these last two games. Um, no clue how a game of six will go. I imagine Boston will probably win a closer one than this. I don't think it'll be another 25, 30-point uh, blowout. But... I mean, you never know. I'll, I'll say Boston wins in six, closes it out, wins by eight. I don't want to say double digits, so I'll say eight. They win by eight, and it's like 110 to 102 or something like that. So we'll see. Uh, on the other side tonight, we have Warriors-Mavericks, game five in Golden State. Dallas avoided the sweep, uh, blew the Warriors out in game four. All of those guys on the Mavericks that needed to hit shots and were not hitting shots finally started hitting shots. Um it's kind of really all there was to it. They're going to keep getting those open looks, and this game is going to come down to if they can keep hitting them or not. Um, the Warriors want guys like Maxi Kleba and Dav Davis Bertans and Dorian Finney-Smith to be the ones taking the shots rather than Luka, Dinwiddie, Jalen Brunson. So probably going to be another, you know, live by those role players, die by those role players type of game. Uh, and for the Warriors on their end, same thing. It's like a broken record. Ball security, don't turn it over. Hit those threes. Um, really, Clay Thompson needs to get going a bit more. Um, he's had some really rough shooting first halves in particular. Second half, he kind of tends to pick it up a bit, but really need him to turn it around. Uh, I think the Warriors probably have the emotional advantage. Coming back home, one of the best uh, home courts in the league still, even in the new arena. So I kind of feel like this is going to be the gentleman's sweep and the Warriors will close it out. Um, especially because they're going to want that rest. So the finals would start a week from today, Thursday. So the Warriors want that rest as much as possible. They don't want to travel back to Texas for another game and then maybe back to California. Like if I'm, if I'm the Warriors, if I'm Steve Kerr, that's what I'm, that's what I'm hammering home. It's like, Hey, we don't want to do this again. Right? Like we want to just rest and relax. Like, so let's do this, like play like adults and get this done. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. Um, and that's everything, I think. That's all the, the notes I had and everything. So please um, let me know your thoughts on the series, on either one, really. If you think Boston's figured it out and that's it. Uh, if you think Dallas has some comebacks left in them, please let me know in the comments. Um, again, just kind of, it does feel weird to talk about basketball with all the news coming out of Uvalde. It just kind of gets worse <laughs> the more I see it. Um, I'm going to put links in the description for... Um, donations, foundations, stuff like that, if you feel so inclined to get involved. Um, I really don't think, you know, another person talking about how bad it is is going to make a whole lot of difference. I'd prefer to just put the means out there to actually try to make a difference. Um, so, uh, again, just really shame, shameful and needless and senseless and all of those things. Send all my love out to the community and the families in Uvalde. Um, can't imagine how it is. Please try and stay strong. Um, 